remember exactly 10 years ago in 2007, this bad boy was the hottest out, man. HP Entertainment PC, running one gigabyte of RAM, where dual core or single core, probably most likely dual core, and running the good old days of Windows Vista. Fun fact, I actually started my YouTube channel, Simply Pops, using this machine. Good old days, classic times. Now, fast forward into today's standards, Apple is advertising the iPad Pro to replace your laptop. We're definitely gonna put that to the test, but we're not gonna use this machine. Um, the battery got shot. We overcharged this thing, so this thing is no good no more, but it was good to go through all the history and looking at it again. But we're gonna be comparing the MacBook Pro versus the iPad Pro. Which of these should you buy first? And I gotta say, no matter which one you buy first, both of these products are amazing. There's no winner here. Both of these Apple products are the top of the line. These are the Pro models. This is like the top. This is the top top. Now obviously the bigger size is really the most top ever, but it's still a Pro machine. Now talking about the specs real quick, I'm not gonna kill you guys with the specs too much. Um, this iPad Pro 9.7 inch display, it has an A9X chip with two gigabytes of RAM and I believe a dual core processor. Now this horsepower here, man, this powerhouse is featuring 16 gigabytes of RAM with a quad core processor running Mac OS Sierra. This is running iOS 10.2 and yes, I'm not gonna talk too much about the specs because day to day usage, you wanna find the device that's more convenient. Now, I would say if you're a college student, high school student, the iPad is the way to go. Something about it, writing on the iPad using the Apple Pencil, it feels magical. I love it. The palm rejection is definitely cool. And just writing down your notes, you're just gonna feel like the boss when you take out the iPad and the pencil, and that's all you need. Now, if you try to do the same thing with the MacBook, you're gonna need to have like a notebook on the side, you're gonna have to take out a pencil, the worksheet or something. With this iPad, my professor, most of her work is online, so I can just pull it up online using the split view, and then I could just boom, boom, or I could import it to Notability, which is this app right now, and I could just take down the notes right there. With this now, you're gonna have to pull up the worksheet, then you're gonna have to have a notebook right next to you, then you're gonna have to have a pen or a pencil, and by the time you turn around, the space of your desk is just too cluttered. When you could just simply take out this and that's it. But yet again, I'm not bashing on the laptop. The laptop is no slouch. You can take this on campus, you can fix phones, you know, restore phones, whatever you like to do. And this is a full blown um, computer operating system. This is Mac OS. So definitely if you're a student, I highly recommend the iPad. It's just definitely the way to go in my opinion. And not to mention if you pair this up with a smart keyboard, then you're definitely gonna be in the money. But just type it on the iPad with the keyboard, I think that's a little overboard for me. But if this is your only computer device, then yeah, Go knock yourself out. Get that. But I, I just feel like I don't need it. Now in terms of graphic design, which of these devices should you buy? Now, the Mac OS, you have a full-blown Photoshop, right? Now this, I'm using Procreate. And I gotta say, man, they kinda on par, but nothing's ever gonna beat the actual full version of Photoshop. So I kinda recommend Photoshop more. That's what the professor's gonna teach you more about Photoshop compared to Procreate. Procreate, a lot of professors don't even know what that is. But Procreate is so cool and there's times where it kind of do replace Photoshop in certain situations such as like just drawing the picture. Now by the way I draw all of this using my Apple Pencil which is amazing. So you can really do a lot of awesome stuff using the Apple Pencil. That's something that you cannot do on Mac OS. It's just obviously it's not touchscreen. So this is a time where I just highly recommend both, but if I had to pick up one of these devices first, I definitely highly recommend the MacBook if you're doing like a, any kind of graphic design. Now, video editing. Pretty much the same thing with video editing. But as you guys can see, you can browse through your timeline. You can definitely, you know, cut some pieces. This is my first time actually using um, iMovie on the iPad. Uh, I just don't really bother sometimes because by the time I do all of this, I could just take out my laptop and edit a video like that. But it's definitely doable. You want the SD card reader for your stuff on the iPad, you can do that, but you're gonna have to buy an adapter. This is where iOS is really limited. You're not gonna have every single export options using this. You're probably gonna have 1080p, but it's gonna definitely compress the hell out of that video. And I just feel like you have more options using Final Cut Pro. But yeah, so editing videos using the Mac, is definitely the way to go. You guys can see I can scrub through the timeline. I can press B to cut this. I can, you know, raise up the exposure. It's just so many options you can do. But if you want to edit a quick little video, 
be my guest. Use iMovie. There's just so many options you can do. You can download plugins if you want. So if you're into video editing, definitely the MacBook is the way to go. Hands down. Now in terms of typing up documents, you can definitely accomplish that using the iPad Pro. Now this is where the smart keyboard comes in really handy or any kind of you know smart connector, keyboard type. That's really where you can get the full potential of typing up fast or really using this as a typing machine. But the on-screen keyboard is no slouch. You can definitely type up things fast, um, simply pops. So it's definitely no slouch. Get yourself a smart connector, keyboard, then you'll be fine. Now I'm probably gonna have to give the slight edge to the MacBook because of the space on the keyboard. Any kind of keyboard case that you kind of get with the iPad Pro, they're probably gonna be not as good as the Mac version because the Mac keyboard is just perfect for me. You know, well-made, spaced out keyboards, but you know, they both, they both kind of accomplish the same thing. I just feel like the spacing is not gonna be all that good. I tried it out in my local Apple store. I didn't really like it too much. That's why I didn't really get it. But I feel like it's not really needed in my opinion. But the keyboard on this is better, and that's why I'm giving the slight edge to the MacBook. Now, in terms of the Keynote app, which is basically PowerPoint, making like a presentation on the iPad Pro, surprisingly, is good. Um, pretty much on par with Mac OS, but I feel like it might be a little bit easier using the iPad, maybe. Look, if you want to resize an image, you can just simply resize it by tapping on one of the blue dots. This is where the Apple Pencil come in really handy again, because you can really be precise with that movement. And look, I, I was able to make this full-blown presentation using my iPad. Now, in terms of the MacBook, it's no slouch either. Um, I just feel like maybe the presentations option is probably going to be a little bit more easier on the Mac. But then again, I, will, I have to give it a tie. So, yeah, so it's pretty much the same. I have to give it a tie, man. And how can I forget about multitasking? Multitasking on both these devices is like night and day, man. Yes, the iPad, you can multitask. You can run two apps at once. But with Mac OS... Yeah, you can run four apps, you can run five apps, whatever you like, as long as it fits the screen and as long as, you know, your your computer can handle it. But yeah, so you can run a bunch of apps using the MacBook, while the iPad, you can only run two apps. Now, you can have a little video playing on the side, too, as well. So I try to avoid talking about the specs and all that, because when it comes down to day-to-day -day usage, that's really what it matters at the end of the day. In terms of, like, showing people stuff, the iPad is definitely easier because it's probably smaller. It's easy just to turn it and it'll actually flip the screen. You know, I, I just definitely like the iPad for sharing stuff and just, you know, showing pictures and all that. Compared to the Mac, you know, you can still show them stuff, but I don't know. It's just more convenient showing them the iPad. Massive size of the iPad Pro. Look at the size of this thing. Just a little comparison. Look at that. Now, real quick, I just want to do a little sound test, man. Uh, let's just do it real quick, man. man. Why not? Since we're here. Let's try the iPad now. Now, the iPad has four speakers, which is a nice little bonus. But without further ado, let's go. Achoo! I don't know. Let me know in the comments, man. They both sound good. Uh, I don't even know, man. They both sound great. Pro machines, man, you got to have good sound or good speakers. Now, in case you guys didn't know, the iPad Pro doesn't have a fan. So, it's no fan. So, it's not going to make any noise. It might overheat if it's uh, if you're using it heavy. But this MacBook 15-inch 2015, it has a fan. Now, unless you get the MacBook, the normal MacBook, that one doesn't have a fan. So you might make a commentary and the fans just start turning on. So just keep that in mind. But overall, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, can an iPad Pro replace your MacBook? And I got to say yes and no. But it depends on the person. Um, if you're in school, if you're in the desk, the Apple Pencil is so cool to just take out the pencil and the iPad and just start writing down notes. It's just so much cooler. It's so much fun. Um, it actually makes writing things actually fun. Uh, and yeah, so it's good for school. But if I was in your shoes right now and you're deciding to buy either a MacBook 
or an iPad Pro or there would be the touch bar version whatever version you buy it's still gonna run Mac OS Sierra or higher which one of these would I buy first in my opinion I would say the MacBook Pro easily because it is a full computer operating system hands down now the iPad is definitely no slouch but if you have an iPhone or own an iPhone I should say it's pretty much gonna be a lot similar if you have an iPhone because pretty much whatever you can do on your phone you can kind of do on your iPad away from the Apple pencil and the smart keyboard and all that but for the most part you'll be fine stick to the MacBook I'm telling you get that first and then somewhere down the line get the iPad Pro definitely you're gonna fall in love with the iPad Pro Trust me when I tell you guys, man. I had this iPad Pro for like six months and I had the Apple Pencil for like three months. And I definitely fell in love with these with this combination, man. Definitely. So yeah, that pretty much concludes the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Took me a lot of work to edit this one for some reason, but um, the least you guys can do, support the video with a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for all your support. And other than that, your boy Pops, and I'll catch you guys on the next trip. Peace.